Hi, dear cricket fans. Uh, this is Ram with uh, Cricket Happenings. And well, uh, what I'm going to do is it is going to be a very quick wrap up actually. Uh, because what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, preview the fifth one day international between England and Pakistan, which is going to be played as a Rose Bowl in Southampton. And then we'll look at two Champions League matches, Champions uh, League 2020 matches, uh, which were inactive today. Well, so first we I'm going to do a very quick preview of the England versus Pakistan game. Uh, as far as this match is concerned, well, all eyes would be really there on Southampton in the Rose Bowl. And what a place to be play, actually, in this particular game at the Rose Bowl in Southampton. Well, it has been, uh, the past history has already shown uh, that it has been a very high scoring affair. Uh, so we, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, and well, as far as England is concerned, well, England, uh, they're looking good. The openers uh, gave them a good start the other day. Uh, Jonathan Trott was uh, unfortunately a failure. He also had a sort of a, um, when in an election session, he had a sort of some differences with, uh, um, he was, I think it was, uh, I, I don't remember the name right now, um, trying to recollect. Uh, sorry about that, dear cricket fans. And Ian Bell uh, also couldn't really fire. Uh, Ian Morgan uh, also, uh, I mean, he did, but he couldn't really go the distance. Uh, in fact, uh, Paul Collingwood's form has not been so good at all in this one day international. Uh, would they make way for Ravi Bupara? Uh, the spinners, uh, normally, it is going to be interesting now how the spinners bowl because this pitch has not been the Southampton Rose Bowl pitch. History says that uh, the short history says that uh, the spinners have not had everything for themselves. So it would be very interesting to watch how Michael Liardi and Graham Swan do it, and especially Graham Swan, who has been the wicket taker in this series. And and then uh, we have the swing bowlers, uh, Grams. Uh, we have uh, Tim Bresman, uh, Stuart Brown, and James Harrison, who form a very good uh, uh, pairing actually, and uh, they would be ready to go. But uh, as far as Pakistan is concerned, uh, Kamran Akmal and Mohammad Afiz the other day they gave a good start uh, to Pakistan. Now that has been they have just failed in one match. So uh, certainly there is a sort of a, a some stability coming in because Kamran Akmal and Mohammad Afiz are looking to be, in my opinion, looking to be a very good opening pair. Asad Shafiq has always been, always promised a lot. Mohamed Yusuf also needs to play very good innings. Uh, Fawad Alam, well, uh, for the last two uh, matches he has been doing very well. Uh, Umar Akmal also has to uh, get a good game under his belt now. Uh, Shahid Afri the other day was looking aggressive. He has to also come uh, good with his uh, bowling. So I'm sure the Pakistan will be running to and Abdul Razak, oh, what can he do? He just those two overs that the way he rattled runs, it really changed the complexion of the game. In the sense, uh, he, he really took Pakistan to 265 and that was responsible for Pakistan's victory. And Dhulmal Gur's reverse swing bowling has been a feature of this tournament now after the last two matches where he has already nipped up 10 wickets uh, in his bag. Uh, Saeed Ajmal, the right arm off spinner, and Shoy Bakhtar has also been looking very impressive. He took three wickets and he has been looking very impressive throughout this one day international series which is good news for Pakistan and Saeed Ajman has also been uh, bowling very well but all in all what we are going to be very interesting to watch uh, is uh, how these matches are going to go because this is the fifth one day international 2-2 level in the series what else do you want uh, I am sure the crowds would be just flocking into the Rose Bowl in Southampton tomorrow even though Pakistan are uh, going with all their problems uh, but they still uh, have uh, really really done a great job according to me Okay, now uh, I don't have much to um, really talk because I need to ch uh, cover the Champions League 2020 matches too. So we go into the 17th match which was played in the Champions League 2020 at the new Wando Stadium in Johannesburg where South Australia uh, and Guyana clashed. And today, Guyana put up a very good show. In fact, if you see the victory margin, they really put up a good fight even though South Australia uh, put up the second highest score in the tournament by making 191 for 6. But I thought Guyana, for the first time in this tournament, really looked the picture uh, that they were. They are the champions of the domestic 2020 uh, in West Indies this time. But really they showed why today, by actually making 176. So they just lost this match by 15 and chasing 191. They, they had 176 for 7, but they still finished on the losing side. They lost this match by 15 runs. And well, for South Australia, um, uh, well, it was... Um, Basically, they were in trouble actually. The ballers were also doing a good job. In fact, Vince, who went in for some real tap the other day, bowled very well. Three overs, no maiden, two for 11. Uh, 
uh, and there were some good balling from the Bishu, the spinner, uh, and well, Klinger was Klinger was out for 16. Uh, Danny Harris, the openers were dismissed uh, very cheaply at 32 for two. Uh, they were, and then Graham Manu contributed only 15. But the main person who contributed that was Callum Ferguson, who made 55 of 37 balls with four fours and two sixes. And uh, those two sixes that he hit was of Steve Jacobs. Uh, he hit him for massive sixes. And uh, Callum Ferguson played a big hand. Uh, even Cameron Borgas contributed 48. That was the stand which really took it because they took the stand from 41 for three in six overs uh, to uh, 129 in the 16th over. So that was the stand which changed it all. And Borgas contributed 48 of 36 balls, three fours and one six. Uh, Daniel Christian also contributed a very good 23. Tom Cooper was not out on uh, on 13, 191 for six. Uh, Barnwell, as I said, one for 39. Then. Uh, we had uh, Jacobs uh, v being very costly, three overs for 50 runs. He was just lashed by Callum Ferguson and Cameron Borgas. Um, and as far as Guyana were concerned, well, Guyana, Travis Dolan uh, departed early for two, but their, their keeper, their uh, captain, Ram Ramnajan Sarwan, really played a very good hand, 70 of just 46 deliveries, eight fours and two sixes. Uh, 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 Richard Ramadin, a new batsman, he made uh, 35 of 22 balls, 5 fours and 1 6. And Steve Jacobs uh, also contributed another very uh, stroke making, uh, st uh, very strokeful 32 of just 19 deliveries, 4 fours and 1 6. And other than that, there was not much of a resistance. Uh, the wicket started uh, falling at regular intervals with uh, uh, Daniel Christian among the wickets, 4 overs, no made in 2 for 20, uh, 3 for 33 for Danny Harris, 1 for 35 for O'Brien, 1 for 36 for Haberfield. 176 all out, but they chased well. They did very well in the in this particular match, but unfortunately they lost this match by 15 runs. And as you know, Guyana are almost out of this competition now. It was in, as you know, the writing was on the wall at that time itself. So, but uh, Guyana, I thought, uh, put up a good performance here. Uh, they, they ran Australia, South Australia, real close. So let's uh, get on to the next match, which is the 18th match, which was uh, played between the Lions and Royal Challengers. And this has ensured that Royal Challengers will march to the semi-final. And Royal Challengers Bangalore did it in style. They won this match by six wickets, all thanks to uh, Virat Kohli playing a very good hand. This time he didn't miss it. 49, not out on 49. In fact, uh, uh, he, he hit uh, Itano really for 19 runs in one over, uh, one flick six, and then one more six he hit, and also a boundary. So that 19 runs made a big difference. After that, they required only two overs, 24. It was almost over 40, and Virat Kohli came to the party. Uh, he was not out on 49 of 29 balls, 4 fours and 2 sixes. Uh, and earlier in the order, Manish Pandey made 44 for Royal Challengers Bangalore. And uh, this is, I'm talking about Royal Challengers actually chasing uh, uh, in, um, a Lions uh, score of 159, which was built round uh, 45 from Alviro Peterson, the captain of 29 balls with 3 fours and 2 sixes. Juan Jarvis was run out for 24 of 18 balls with 3 fours and 1 six. Neil McKenzie was run out for 39 of 35 balls and 4 uh, with 4 fours. And a contribution of 22 from Freeling was not out 22 of 9 balls with 1 4 and 2 sixes. That's what really contributed to Lions score of 159. The bowling was very good. Praveen Kumar was very costly today. 3 overs for 34. Vinay Kumar, 2 for 23. And, but Anil Kumble was the one who really, really put the brakes on the Lions innings by bowling um, uh, beautifully. 4 overs no made and 1 for 30 in his figures. Uh, Dale Steen went uh, for some runs, 4 overs for 31. Uh, Dupree's 1 for 32 and 3 was for 24 for Virat Kohli was also used by Anil Kumble. Anil Kumble's captaincy was also very good today and he also did a good job in the captaincy as well as the bowling and as I said Royal Challengers Bangalore got a good start today uh, for the first time Manish Pandey playing very well today uh, and uh, contributing 44 of 36 balls with 6 fours and 1 6 Rahul Dravid contributed 33 of 26 balls with 5 fours Virat Kohli as I said was the hero not out on 49 of 29 balls 4 fours and 2 sixes and well what he missed the other day uh, he, he made up here and he got the man of the match too and ross taylor was out for five robin of the power was run out for seven and cameron white was not out on 19 of 12 balls one four one six so a decent hit for uh, cameron white too and as far as the bowling figures are concerned uh Ethan really went for four ran for runs four was number one none for 41 three overs for 22 for freeling cameron four was one for 35 Frankie, so three was one for 27, Devrun, one over for 13, and four was no one for 21 for Deacon. So that was it. So Virat Kohli was the hero there, taking them to victory. So dear friends, I know it, it has been a very, very short report uh, because one is time, 
and another is uh, I, I i just don't have time it's very late at night as i said 11 o'clock at night so i just wrapped it up i made a capsule of everything preview of the england pakistan fifth one day international and two matches i covered well uh, i know whether whether uh, whether you dear cricket fans loved it or not but unfortunately uh, i could go only uh, this way unfortunately but uh, well but i'm very uh, i'm having the pleasure of bringing this cricket happenings to you all dear cricket fans friends and subscribers you loyal dear cricket fans of cricket happenings that's it real uh, dear cricket fans subscribers and friends thanks for your company this is ram signing off thank you